Hey, how you doing? I'm Tom from North Coast of California. I run a little print shop out here called smoothprints.net. And uh, these days we've been working with some direct-to-film printing. It's a direct-to-film printing transfer system. And uh, in the process of doing this, I, I made a lot of rags, you know, shirts that I had to throw in the trash or use for rags to clean up messes in the shop. You know, going through the trial and error, that's the way I learned things. So I'm here to share with you the uh, Acrorip software today. And uh, we'll be sharing other things about the printer and so forth later on in different videos. But this one's about the Acrorip software. And it's a, basically a pretty simple software, but it's the software that drives these DTF modified printers and uh, if you make a couple of small mistakes in there you can make rags instead of money so I'm here to clear up some of that stuff with that without saying too much more about that I'll I'll jump into the software here and uh, we'll start first of all I brought in this file smoothprints.net this one I made up in the in uh, Corel Draw or Photoshop or whatever you prefer, and it's exported into a PNG file. PNG, and that's the file that this Acrorip software likes the best. And then uh, you just import it by going up here to the File Manager on the top left hand corner, open, and Browse through your computer and find the file that that you want to use. This one today we're going to use the DTF file. And we're just clicking on that and it's going to open up here in the software pretty soon. Be patient. Depending on your computer, it takes a while to open up. It's a pretty good computer, but it still takes a little while. Yes, it takes a little while. I'm being patient. I'm going to drink a little coffee. That's good. That's good stuff right there. Patience, patience. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. Hey, it came in. Amazing. Sorry to make you wait for that. At any rate, what's wrong with this file? If you look at it, <clears throat> well, we haven't really set it up. We just brought it in. But if we're in the layout tab down here on the bottom right, you click on that once depending upon where you are in this Acrorip software. The Acrorip software runs on a dongle. It was, and, and the dongle is probably cost on average $100. It's pretty, pretty reasonably priced RIP software for what we're doing here. At any rate, on the layout page is some things that you need to know. First of all, on the very top, this is probably the most important thing. Here we have, we have the paper layout. This is the, this is the film that we're going to be using. It's a PET plastic type film and uh, we print garment ink on top of that and it transfers over later. We'll go through the whole system but right now we're talking about the Acrorip. And we're on the first page and <clears throat> what we have in this top column right up here is an 8 by 12 sheet is what this is we're working with. This graphic is laid out in uh, 12 by 12 format, I'm saying. PNG again. Over here down further, you want to look at this. You want to look at this true or false equal proportions right here. If it's false, it's going to skew the image out of, out of shape. You don't want that. You want, you want to keep this on true as much as possible. That way when you come up in here and you want to bring this image in, you can grab the top corner and you can pull it evenly. Even distribution. Proportionately, proportionately correct. That's what we call it, right? Yeah. So those are some pretty important features here. You can, these are easy to change up here. You change the 8 to 12. And then you see what happens, right? Yeah. 
go back to eight. So those are important settings. With that said, <clears throat> look at the top bar across here is another important setting. You can rotate your image right here. You can set it to the center. Each one of these blocks I have set up it actually is scaled to about an inch. So that'd be like two inches down off the collar you want want your it doesn't matter because it's a transfer. As long as it ends up in the middle of this sheet, you're gonna be good. But at any rate, if you were using DTG, you'd want that to be off the collar right there. And now <clears throat> We want to, using the DTG, DTF format, we want to mirror this image because when it goes on, it gets printed onto the top of this paper. And then we're going to turn the paper over and we're going to transfer it. So it's a mirror image is what we want. Right? So those are the important settings on this page. And that, <coughs> there's other settings on there, of course. You can change the the output position, you can change the output size, all those. I like to change the size by using the handles right here on the side. This is the way I like to do it. It's just simple for me. Okay, so moving on, let's move to the printer. Now, in the printer format, down here on the bottom again, printer, you see, these are. this is an important bar down here on the bottom you're going to switch between different layouts here on the bottom. We're in the printer layout right now. The top the top portion of this is the printer you're using, the format that you want to use. <clears throat> I'm using a Epson L1800 so I want to use this format just because it works, okay? And, and uh, the format that I'm using is a stylus photo 1390, 1400. That's just the one that works the best. So I, I suggest you go to that one. The next one is your port. Down your port. Now if you select on your port, you'll see whatever printer you have. You want to select a printer that's, that's called for here. See I have the L1800 series printers showing right here. That's the one I selected. Uh, it's important that you have that right. Check paper size off. Off. Just have that off. Now we have resolution setups. If you if you go in here, this this is about the best resolution that I've found right here. 1440 by 720. And you want to make those the same, whether it be the white or the color. So just click on it. 1440 by 720. See now they're both the same. You get no confusion in your print. Those are the important things on this sheet. Now, one more thing down here. Let's go down to the bottom on this printer page and select the mix. Color dot size. We want, I prefer medium large color dot size. That's the dots that come out of your print head and land on the transfer sheet. Now, you might want to mess with these, get different settings going for yourself, but for me, medium large is working. So, I'm just sharing with you what's, what's working for me so I don't make rags anymore, you know, if you bear with me for a second. And I believe that that's all we need on that particular printer settings. Now we go to the color settings over here, color settings. This is where you want to make sure that you got your, your color settings right. This one, YK... WWMC, that's, that's uh, yellow, black, white, white, magenta, cayenne. Those are, those are the colors that, that, uh, that we're going to be utilizing on our printer, on our 1800. Then that's the order that they're in. See, there's other orders here, too. All white, if you had all white or whatever else. But this is, this is the one you want to use with the two with two W's. Now I like to set this one right here, the ink limit. This ink limit, this is going to be for your color ink right here. And I like to set that at 50. It's just my preference, so that's what I found to work out best for me. 
and then down here in the uh, in the white ink setup down at the bottom. I like to change this. I like to go a little bit heavier on that. I'll go 120, whatever your preference is. I'm using 120 on the white ink. Now the color ink is going to lay down for us, and the white ink is going to fall right over the top of it. It's coming. It's a one-pass system, and that's why this AccuRip is, is is so good because it does it all in one pass. On my DTG printers, I have to go with two passes. It's white first, and then color on top. Uh, this is the opposite because of the transfer, of course. At any rate, you can mess with your colors a little bit right here with this bar, the color bar. And you can change your brightness and contrast if you'd like. You want to work on the ICC profile. I just use the standard whatever whatever ICC profile that, that's being called for right there. I just added in Photoshop. Default CMYK, that's what I'm using. Anyways, with all that said, uh, that's all we need to do on that page. And we'll, we'll go over to the white page for a minute. Not much you want to do over here on the white page, except for this top bar right here. Now see, you can put gradient white under any colored pixel right here. But, uh, that doesn't seem to work out for me. And I found what works best, and a lot of people find what works best is 100% white under any colored pixel, no matter what you're doing, no matter whether you're going on light colored shirt or dark colored shirt, this is always the best setting for me. I don't know, that's something that you're going to find out for yourself, I think, but I recommend 100% white under any colored pixel. Don't forget this one. It's kind of important. And uh, let's, we'll, we'll skim right past these. These are something you guys can look into later. Uh, black detect threshold and white highlights all that stuff you can look into that stuff later if you want and uh, <clears throat> down here we can we can check the color if you put color on here and uh, let's see let's let's set material color for preview let's say you got a let's say you got a I don't know baby blue shirt here you want to work with so you choose baby blue then you go over here to preview and this gives you an idea what your what your colors are going to look like in the end result right anyway we'll go right back to color here and down here on the bottom this is kind of another another important setting down here these pixels are the choke pixels in other words the white under the color edges you don't want white sticking out beyond your graphic. You want it to tuck in under the edges. So that's this is set up for three pixels under the edges, and I'll leave that for, like that right now. And you can you can change that as you see fit. I've seen it up to ten pixels inside, and dep depending upon what your border of your your image is. And uh, listen, let's look at oh, there's a white white channel setting. So I just I just set up all my channels so white can be used on any one. With that said, now, we're going to go back. We have we seem to have everything set up here. We're going to go back to the printer settings. Printer again. Now, we're going to click on the top little printer up here on the top right. This is probably going to be one of the last things we do before it hits the printer, before it goes out to print. We're going to look it over. We can see what's going on here. 100% white under any colored pixel. See, now, this is something you can change right here in the settings, too. You know, if you accidentally didn't put it and you had gradient white under any pixel, you can change it right there, see? Change it back to 100% under any pixel. Now, we want to print the color first because it's a transfer. So the color has to go down and then the white has to go over the top of it. Print color first. Color and white is what we're printing. And now, with all that done, we have one copy. We're ready to print. We send this to the printer right here. I won't send it right now, but later I'm going to show you another video where I'm going to send this. I hope that that helps some people out there that are having trouble with this AccuRip software. You, what you do is you you buy the dongle. I'll, I'll be selling dongles, I guess, and you can get them online and different 
different places. But uh, yeah, they cost about a hundred dollars, and then you hit, then you you download the software off the internet, and without the dongle, you're not going to be able to run this software. And this software is very important for what you're doing. At any rate, with all that said, I hope this solves some problems for some people out there, or, and you don't have to make you don't have to make rags instead of money. <laughs> Thank you for your time. See you on the next one.